Welcome to Good for the Soul Podcast. My name is Shane Whalen, of course, and I am your host as always. And today, we have a very, very special guest again. I know I feel like I say that every time, but I only have special people on the show, okay? They're special to me, okay? And then after you listen, they'll be special to you, okay? So today, we have my very, very special friend, Paul. Me and Paul met when we were, I was a sophomore, and he was a freshman in high school. We met in the, in the wrestling room, essentially. And uh, we, we definitely hit it off. We've been practically brothers. He's lived at my house for periods amount of time. Something that Paul doesn't mention in this in this interview or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Paul will come over to my house. Sometimes uninvited. You know? He'll just show up. That's his thing. He's a nomad. I swear to God, he doesn't see his parents for fucking three weeks at a time. Okay? Like not like like shows up with a backpack on a Tuesday and I say, Bro, what are you doing? We have school tomorrow. They'll say, oh, I told my parents I was sleeping here. And I said, oh, they're okay with it. He was like, yeah. Okay. No harm, no foul. I love having him over. You know what I don't love? When he eats all the food in my fridge. That's not saying a lot. Whalens, we don't fucking pack a lot of food in the fridge. Obviously. Because me and my brother probably have a combined 3% body fat. You know? Okay. I love this man. Does he eat the food in my fridge? Yes. Do I yell at him for it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. This man's crazy. He's invincible. <laughs> no, I, dude, nobody gets my humor like Paulie. Like, I could text Paulie one word, and he'll automatically die because he knows what I'm talking about. I could look, I could send Paulie a selfie of a look that I'm doing, and he'll know what I'm talking Oh, dude. You can't even get on a wavelength, but just try. Listen, I'm not going to waste too much of your time. Uh, let's get into it. Oh, wow. Shit. Luke Keekley retired. That's crazy. Really? Yeah. Isn't he young? He's 28 years old. Why the fuck is he retiring? Bro, you know why Luke Keekley probably retired? Because he's probably like, I ha- pro- he probably has a wife or a girlfriend and he doesn't want to go through a new regime with Matt Rule. And he's probably like, dude, fuck this. Like, I'm done. Like, imagine playing a sport your whole life. Like wrestling. You played, re- you wrestled your entire life. And, and then by the time you got to college at Stevens, you were like, fuck this, dude. I do not want to wrestle right now. Wrestling's a different animal than a lot of other sports. I'll give you that. But, dude, you probably just reach a breaking point. You're like, I just, like, don't want to do this anymore. My breaking point was literally senior year. Like, I was wrestling 26 all year. <clears throat> and then districts coming up. I remember I was sitting at the lunch table. Um, or used to used to sit back by the vending machines. Caravella and uh, Ekolov come up to me. We think you should go twenty. It's like, yo, I haven't made twenty once this year. Yeah, you made it like fakely, dude. I I made it at the Mustang Classic, and I weighed in at one twenty six. Like my weight was 126 and they're like yeah you made it i was like for for 120 they're like yeah you made flat weight it's like all right i guess i made flat weight that was without a doubt the worst weight cut i've ever had in my life the sunday before districts districts was on friday i weighed 142 oh i had to weigh 122 oh Bro, that's a, that's the saddest look on the scale, too. That fucking little sad step Dude. down right after looking at that. You're probably like, oh, bro. I was like, fuck. Like, I told him I would make it. And you know me. I fucking make weight. So that was. Unlike some people we know. <laughs> that was literally the worst. I remember the last day at practice, I had a garbage bag on, four layers of clothes. And I was wrestling little Luke. He was, like, pushing me around. I was like, bro, I literally can't move. Like, just move me around so I could sweat. (laughs) Like, literally fading in and out of consciousness. And I made it. And then I did well in districts because my first match or two were fucking scrubs. So I pinned the kid in, like, 30 seconds. What seed were you your senior year for districts? And, yo, okay, let me ask you a question. I was the first seed. You were the first seed at 20? Yeah. And let me... Because I beat Freddie later that earlier on that year really Mm -hmm. let me ask you a question was the districts redistrict like Mm -hmm. redrawn so like the that year senior year was the last year before they did all the fucking crazy changes to the districts right i think there was one year after Mm -hmm. one or two years got it but after 
if districts and regions were like that, I would have made states literally every year. Oh, dude. You look at it now, you're like, oh, my God. Dude, like, it's an absolute joke. I remember I went to, it might have been the first year I went to regions, and um, Nick Caracappa was wrestling. Dude, he got the kid injury forfeited in the, the semis. semis. I remember he that. he literally got a free ride to the finals. And then the kid wrestled for third, fourth. That injury defaulted. Like, how does that make sense? <laughs> and they also... Yo, imagine, like, dude. They also changed it because it used to be top three in regions, but then they changed it to top four. So, like, if you made it to the third, fourth match, you were going to states regardless. What did he thought? Caracapo was going to kill him? Like... I have no idea. That's crazy. But I saw that. I was like, that's kind of fucked, man. Okay, so you had to make 22 again for regions after you won districts? I did. I lost the Friday and Ultimate Ride out, so I had to make it that Wednesday. So I was eating and shit all day. Probably weighed like 136. And then I had to make it four days later. <sighs> make 122 or 124? 122. The <sighs> weight was 120. The two pound allowance. Yeah, but if you're wrestling, I feel like if you're wrestling consecutive days, I mean, yeah, it's I not mean, consecutive days. It's yeah, it's a couple like if days. you wrestle Friday, Saturday, you get an extra pound, so it would have been one twenty three. Mm-hmm. But you technically had those four or five days, and then the first round, I, I lost the first round. I wrestled like dog shit, and I remember uh, fucking Caravella to this day. Every time I see him, he's like, "I should have never made you go one twenty." It's like I I told you that we argued for. Literally 30 minutes at lunch, and you guys were, I, I just said, fuck it, I'll do it. So, without getting into the logistics of wrestling, I think wrestling, I think it was one of the best things for our friend, our group of friends is friendship. Not because, like, we bled and we sweat together and, uh, you know, camaraderie of the team, all that nonsense, but somebody who will not be named because i refuse to give him any type of publicity or anything attention that because that's what he desires at the end of the day i think somebody who was involved with the organization or the the team i'll say had the best quotable one-liners bro i felt like i was in a will ferrell movie for three years or two years because i because he was only involved with two years like bro literally the things that came out of this person's mouth were better than stepbrothers old school wedding crashers and every single other quotable movie combined he was literally a cartoon character bro like he was actually the reason i didn't want to go to st john <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I remember I was in like eighth grade. My brother was on the wrestling team and he walked up to me in the stands one day and he just said some dumb shit. And I was like, mom, I'm, this can't be my coach for the next four years. Cause like I, you, I've wrestled my entire fucking life. So it wasn't like a side sport for like, as, as it was for you guys, you know, like mm-hmm. you played football, you did other things for me. I just straight wrestled. Like, yeah, like, that was my life. Like you definitely took it the most serious out of all of us. Not because like, not like I didn't take it seriously, but you obviously had the most skill out of our group of friends. I mean, you, but also you've been doing it for so long. You know what I mean? I've literally wrestled since kindergarten. So I was like three or four years old. Imagine giving somebody a baseball bat at 15 years old and being like, hit a fastball. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's like some that it's hard, hard to pick up. I mean, people do it. People start in freshman year and are and are very successful with it but you were the uh like had the most promising talent i could i guess you could say i had this conversation with gina the other day like i didn't i didn't wrestle to i didn't i didn't wrestle or play football to win games or matches or start like dude i did it to be a part of the team like yeah. being a part of the team the camaraderie was, amongst dude, the team dude, that's what i'm just, saying like yo what are you gonna like what it. are you gonna do after school go home and like do nothing you know what i mean like yeah like dude the rest like i don't care i mean yeah cutting weight practice all that stuff is like annoying but like dude even the 45 minutes probably combined in a day you have in the locker room with somebody is like it's like special to me like you know what i mean like i don't know i love the practice though Practice was fun. Dude, i'll tell you what wrestling practice way better than football practice i was like tougher way no no like way better in the terms of like i didn't hate wrestling practice i hated football practice why 
hated it. Oh, because I had to put on like 40 pounds of pads every day <laughs> and I would either be used as a test dummy or a lawn ornament on the sideline, bro. Like literally, <laughs> like it was miserable. I'll never forget the fucking, the game me and Landy went to, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they literally kick off the ball. Now you guys, that shit Yeah, kicked we kicked it, it off. And we see everyone running down the field. We're like, where is he, bro? We look like five yards back. And there you are with the 35 pounds of pads on. Bro, just trying to keep up. Bro, you have to admit that they gave me massive shoulder pads. Oh, yeah. Like bigger than Falco's. Oh, <laughs> dude. They would just give me the most massive ones. And I would be like, I don't understand why this has to be mine. Could I please just have like normal size they ones? They definitely did it on purpose. Oh, bro. Easily. Just like, no, oh, dude. But it was so fun. Dude, my you there's a picture <laughs> there's a picture of me and Papson like on the sideline and <laughs> it's literally like my helmet's off and I'm like I'm like exhausted sweating like talking to him bro my head the length of my shoulder pads is four of my normal heads like <laughs> across like like it's ginormous you probably it, have like the old school pads me and Brandon Fur <laughs> who was an O lineman and probably three times the size of me he's probably like six four he was he was a big dude. He had the same shoulder pads as I did. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, I was... You were like 140 oh, pounds. Oh, bro, not even. <laughs> I didn't hit a buck 40 till probably college. Really? Well, I mean, I... Senior year, I wrestled what, 120? I wrestled yeah. 120 senior year. I mean, I didn't... Freshman year, I weighed 96 pounds. Yeah, I remember Literally that. Literally 96 pounds. Wrestled 106. Yo, I remember coming up to you in the locker room... This is what I want to talk about. I remember coming up to you in the locker room because I recognized you from St. Rose. Yeah. Because I think we overlapped in St. Rose like a week. Uh, yeah, I left like mid seventh grade. No, you left mid sixth grade. I left mid. I came mid my seventh grade. Did I leave mid sixth grade? Might have been. I don't really remember. I, I just remember I left in like, I want to say like February, March to go to gets because mm -hmm. i wrestled for them st mm -hmm. rose didn't have a wrestling team mm -hmm. so um well you weren't gonna wrestle for like the borough or whatever the whatever the fuck it was well i couldn't i had to i had to wrestle at the district that i would be going to mm -hmm. so rado the coach at gets was like yeah like you could definitely wrestle for us Did i remember he didn't even know i was transferring like first day of school i walk in walk into his office he's like paulie what are you doing here it's like, dude, I go here now. <laughs> it's like, what you, really? Yeah, he's like, what do you mean you go here now? Was middle school wrestling like every day after practice type shit? Yeah. Oh, re like literally like regular wrestling practice every day. Yeah, we would run the hallways, <sighs> roll out the mats. Bro. Literally. But Bro. like that was like, even if I didn't do that, I was still going to elite two, three days a week. Easily, like, yeah. I always had practice and I don't, the thing I missed the most about wrestling was probably jersey shore wrestling bro we well were, that's like your all-star team like my little brother played like all-star baseball and they would like travel like yeah, it's the same concept like pretty much it was all of your boys who were all nice at wrestling yeah, would just wasn't, travel um, the country it, it wasn't uh like jackson you know it split up between liberty and memorial right jersey shore was combined so we were just a filthy we literally went eight years undefeated like 110 and now we would just shit on teams like warming up we'd be playing this game called toe tag Everyone else be having serious warm ups. Like we'd just be fucking around and just shit on them. It was a just like time. didn't give a shit. Like we just didn't give a fuck. <laughs> we were like ten years old. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. But uh, let me ask you this: Why do you think some te uh some towns like Jackson or Brick or like you know some of these other powerhouses like they're consecutively good throughout? year after year after year what do you think makes them like consistently good every year well jackson's not that great anymore really yeah but um i think a lot of it has to do with like siblings because mm -hmm. you think about it, you had scott winston went undefeated in high school then you had dallas winston state champ mm -hmm. brock winston was the one that i don't think he's bad but obviously he's not scott or dallas Bro, so that's think, gotta suck being yeah. the third brother imagine all right so imagine this you got two older brothers both undefeated in wrestling in high school no dallas wasn't undefeated but he was a state champ 
which is like, yeah, I know what you're saying. A lot to look like. Scott was literally undefeated in high school besides, I think he lost a couple of times in Beast of the East, but that doesn't really count towards your high school record. Uh, record. Mm-hmm. Like Dean Peterson, he goes to SJV right now. Right. Does he, st- oh, <laughs> yo, he doesn't practice. With the yeah. Team. Like the kid's so good that he literally doesn't practice with the team. Like he does, his, he goes to his own practice. Where's his practice? I have no idea. <laughs> he probably just goes to like privates with some of them. Every- so, because like he's probably trying to get like a Penn State scholarship, honestly. He committed to Princeton. Oh, did he? I yeah. mean, there you go. That pays for itself. You know what I mean? I think he's like only a sophomore, junior too, and he's already committed. So that's that's probably gonna change. Mm-hmm. I feel like everyone commits, and then junior, senior year comes, you're like, fuck that, and switch like Penn State. Or I something. mean, dude, like, it. Let let me let me ask you this. Don't you feel like some of the very 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 good wrestlers are like some of the weirdest individuals that you've ever met? Sometimes. Oh yeah, antisocial, yeah. speech impediment, be- some weird thing going be- on with them. Because like they spend their entire life just training. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they win, and then they go home. Imagine you were undefeated in high school, and won four state championships, right? Mm-hmm. You would have no friends, probably. No. Like. You would ha- you would have literally had to just dedicate your entire life to something, yeah. Something that doesn't even have a pro, like a pro caliber. Yeah, the most of, that's also why I kind of didn't want to wrestle in college either, because like, there's not much you could do with it. If the most you could do is go to the Olympics, like there's no like pro wrestling besides WWE, but that's not fucking wrestling. That's a theater, exactly. <laughs> And that's not even the same as like high school wrestling. Like it's two di- completely different styles. Like what's it like freestyle wrestling? Yeah, h- high schools folk style. Olympics they have freestyle Greco Roman. What's college? College is folk style, but the rules are different. The rules are different. That's why I yeah, thought. Yeah, you get four back points. You could literally wrestle like if me or you, me and you are on the edge of the circle, and like I have my finger in like we're still alive. Mm. Like you have to be completely out of the circle, which is pretty cool. There's riding time. What's what's in high school, what's the rule for, for being out, out of bounds, three limbs? Yeah, I think it was three limbs how to be out. I feel like they want, they changed it like right when I was graduating sometime. I remember they changed the rules sometime around like my end of the career. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know why they don't just make it the same. Like if you're wrestling in high school, you're probably and you're good you're gonna think about wrestling in college why not make it the same like you get four back points in college i remember i was uh wrestling off because i made it at stevens i went to i did wrestle off so i came in second but um there was like six kids in my weight and the first kid i wrestled i remember i like tilted and was getting back points and the ref goes four i was like what the fuck so like, what do you mean four <laughs> 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 I teched him in like the first period, and the first period's three minutes instead of two minutes, so it goes three two two, mm-hmm. which is a it, big dude. Thing. The three two two is crazy. Mm-hmm. First period's like half the match. I think the best college match that I've ever seen was Dake versus Taylor. Honestly, okay. I thought that was one of the coolest matchups ever. I like watching um. Sebastian Rivera right now. Oh yeah, obviously because you know him. That's your boy. I know he's not my boy. Like I know him, but if you saw like, him somewhere, you'd walk up to him and you'd say, "Hey, bro, what's up?" That's your oh, boy. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, we we have wrestled forever. Like I don't wrestle anymore, but I could still walk into Elite and just be like, "Yo, what's up, Steve? How we doing?" Like he just wrestled in um Puerto Rico. He's the representative for Puerto Rico going into like the Olympics. Your coach or Sebastian? Sebastian. Is going to be in the Olympics? No. So the way it works, because I was I DM Steve on Instagram because he was posting on it. So you're probably closer with his dad because he was your coach forever, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And Sebastian's younger than us, too. So yeah, it's like. Yeah, Sebastian's a year. He's a year younger than me. So, so I'm a year under He's two under you. But um, pretty much what he said is he, he won in Puerto Rico. So now he goes to another like interna- international tournament with a bunch of other representatives from a bunch of different countries all over the world and then he has to place i i forget what he has to place in that but if he places in that then he goes to the olympics or something like that so that's kind of crazy dude he's filthy i love watching him wrestle his ankle picks are crazy he's just so good on his feet like if you're that's another big thing in college if you're good on your feet like there's not much a lot of people could do i feel like it's there's minimal takedowns sometimes like literally i'll in see college, like yeah. i'll see like a three minute round 
like the opening round or oh yeah opening round yeah yeah period opening period <laughs> same shit third period our period opening round uh, opening round <laughs> fuck it i said it again opening I period about that. <laughs> third period our period oh my god that guy's such a joke <laughs> <laughs> um so so like in the first period They'll be on their feet the entire time and they'll just be like working for a takedown and just like nobody will get anything. And not because they're not trying to, because literally like they're just so good. Another dude that I love watching is fucking um, Yanni Diakamahalas from Cornell. Uh, From Cornell, dude, he literally, his limbs are like rubber. Like, you could be on the deepest shot, and this dude's, like, dislocating his knee and somehow scoring on you. Like, the best people in the world, too. He was in the Olympic trials and shit. Yo, low-key flexibility is probably a huge advantage in wrestling. Oh, for sure. If you could do a split, bro, like, that's a big advantage. If someone's in on your leg and you could split back, like... Imagine, bro. Imagine you get in on a deep, high crotch single, and the guy just hits you with a fucking split. Terrence used to do it. Oh, really? Yeah. Because think about it, you need you need to get around both legs for two. If you have one and the kid's doing a split and you go to gather, like, he's just standing up and probably fighting that leg down. That's but. crazy. Okay. So, this is what I wanted to talk to you about before, the, the, my, my tangent before. Because, like, the point ultimately is, is I talk to Tom about this all the time, too. Because Tom wrestled in college and obviously did. Uh, he did, div- I think... Messiah might have been Division Three, but it might have been the best Division Three wrestling program in the, in the country. Like I know, whatever division they were in, they won like national championships. Yeah. So I was actually thinking about it one time. I mean, like you look at like the, there's like a there's like a Premier League lacrosse now. There's like there's like professional lacrosse. There's like uh, there's like the XFL. There was the AAF last year. Like, dude, imagine an eight team league. Like if, if it was like New Jersey, New York, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Virginia, and like Boston or something, or like I'm I'm only naming those strictly because I know they're uh, predominantly like really good wrestling. Uh, like yeah, states, the East, East Coast has some filthy wrestlers, right? So like, imagine you had that. You just made you just like made a team. Like you got a team of like of like really famous, like not famous, but like. The kids who like won nationals, like like our yeah. natty championships, like in D one and stuff, and like you just market them, and then you just do, do just do duels up and down the weight class in the spotlight, and then like your team's lit, and you just market your team. Like I feel like that would have a huge following. The only reason I think, well, pros and cons, I think it would have a big following just because um, I feel like MMA right now is becoming yeah. a lot bigger. Yeah, um, MMA MMA kind of takes that like takes it that takes it, it takes everything. It takes Miss Martial Arts, mm-hmm. fucking karate, like literally mm-hmm. everything, every specialty there is, right. BJJ. But those sports are not high school or collegiate sports. Like you can't yeah. go I'm <clears throat> with I'm sure I'm wrong in on a technicality here, but you don't go to college for Bra- uh, Brazilian Brazilian <laughs> jiu-jitsu, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. Like, there might be a club, but they're not traveling around the country going to big ass. You're not getting a scholarship for it. Let's put it that way. No. You know what I mean? The other thing is the the con. I feel like a lot of people don't know about wrestling. And when you watch two very high caliber kids, you could see it as being boring. You can. Because there's not, sometimes there's not much going on. Sometimes you'll get a, like a 10-8 match, which is exciting. But other times it's going to be three two. You're going into overtime. It goes down to riding time. So a lot of people are like, "This isn't like this isn't fun to watch." This isn't entertaining. But someone that has the mental of wrestling, they know all the skill that it takes. So they're like, "Wow, this is a good match," even though it is one one. You know what I mean? Dude, Aiden uh, brought me to uh, Penn State Rutgers at Rutgers, bro. That mm-hmm. place was sold the fuck out and electric. You're telling me that if you didn't get some D1 schools and like people who love wrestling, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's definitely growing now. It's you know what I mean? Sure that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying like, yeah, MMA does take that spot of like the professionalism of like wrestling and like fighter mentality and like adversarial opponent type sports. But I'm just saying like, imagine. And the reason I also said those cities before 
was because not only do they have the best wrestlers, but I named those because they're big wrestling fucking yeah, big community communities. Wrestling, yeah, you know what I mean. For sure. Like you're telling me that if you if you had the possibility to be a professional like folk wrestler or mm -hmm. freestyle wrestler or whatever the case may be, and like a sick duel. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and like, yo, I get what you're saying. The individual match might not be entertaining, but somebody's got to win and somebody's getting points. And mm -hmm. whoever wins in that duel is getting points. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, I just, I just think that would be really cool. And like, probably doesn't cost that much money. You know what I mean? Like, dude. No, to start a team, think about what do you need? You can buy, singlets, I think like gear. buying, I think originally, I, I, I could be wrong. I, I've been listening from somebody else who told me this, but dude when like professional lacrosse started it was a million dollars to buy a team which in all reality it's not that much it's not that much comparatively to what 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 you know what i mean like, like an nfl team that's what i'm saying like millions of dollars like bro the, like the knicks are worth like six billion i think with like msg included yeah, like it's unreal trash. it's unreal well i mean msg is the mecca but the knicks are not that good yeah that's the other thing you have to think about it like where are you hosting these matches? You do it. You you could do it, bro. The a the XFL is in MetLife. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're telling me that you can't. I've wrestled on a football field before. Like they rolled out. Really? It was called Midnight Madness. They rolled out like seven mats, like ten o'clock at night. I'm just at a tournament. Where at? Was it like a high school football? Yeah, field? it was like a high school football field. Great idea. The nighttime definitely wasn't the time to do it because, like, dew built up on the mats, bro. By the time I wrestled my last match, I was literally ice skating. It was yeah. kind of fun, though, but, mm -hmm. like, definitely. I feel like outside play. and wrestling don't mix very well. That and, um... You did the sand one? The no, beach. Aiden did the sand one. Or yeah, you did it. You did it, too. I, I don't think I've ever actually did that one, but uh, it's a, uh... It's just a takedown tournament because... Mm -hmm. You're not gonna ride someone out in the sand. Just get a that would full be sand. literally miserable. That Terrible. might that might be the most miserable feeling. Getting a face full of sand yeah. while somebody's fucking throwing an R bar in. Oh my god! Just imagine God. like double boots on top of oh. you, Preston, just bro. facing the sand. Bro, I'm 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 already congested and I'm having trouble uh, trouble breathing just thinking about it. Honestly, the best atmosphere though I feel like was um the Virginia Beach duels. That was sick. It was a national tournament. Were they outside? I remember you went to those no, every year. No, it was inside. It was at the uh, the convention center down in Virginia Beach. Mm -hmm. But it was just packed, dude. Like, people everywhere. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're telling me that if you didn't pay professional wrestlers a salary of, like, 35k a year you know mm. what i mean or like or like even less you know what? dude there's some people in these clubs that i look at i'm like oh they're here for free just because they love wrestling yeah. you know what i mean like i guarantee 35k doesn't sound like a lot but you got to think about all the sponsorships and uh shit that they're going to be getting probably like cliff keen has shoes and head gear that's what i'm saying you mark you market brand. them dude dude like think about it you just start a youtube page you start, a, you start a YouTube page, Instagram page, like you have spotlights on all your wrestlers, like profiles about where they went to school, mm -hmm. like their high school record, their college record, notable losses, notable wins. I'm telling you, I think it could work. I really, really do. Yeah, for sure. I really do. And it, and I, I mean, obviously I don't have the manpower or the funds to do it. <laughs> and like, yo, to be honest, or the passion for wrestling. I mean, listen, I love wrestling. I'll go to a match, but... I have a lot of other interests that, like, if I have a 10 to $20 million, I'm not starting the professional wrestling league. Yeah, for sure. You know I what know I mean? What you're saying. But, like, but go, you're, going back to the, oh, different, yeah. the different regions and shit, like, different states, a lot of the people wrestle differently. Like, I remember I was in a match. Uh, this was the individual national tournament, and I splatled this kid. And literally, my dad was like, dude, you splatled that kid? And there was, like, 20 30 people that just started gathering around the mat they were like what the fuck is that move like mm -hmm. what did he just do and like they have no idea so i feel like that would also gain attention just seeing like different styles clash of course of course and like i i mean this is a, a hypothetical rule for a, a an imaginary league but imagine you weren't <laughs> you weren't you were only allowed to sign like so like say like i was the new jersey fucking whatever's you know what i mean the you know I don't know, skateboards. I don't know. I'm looking around my room. I can't fucking think of a, think of a name. <laughs> the New Jersey Pork Rolls. That would actually be low-key hysterical. That'd be lit because after a while, you just eat pork rolls. That's roll. what I'm saying. So anyway, 
so anyway, like you're only allowed in New Jersey to sign like New Jersey kids. Team would be gross. Oh, team would be gross. You know what I mean? And the PA kids do the same thing with PA and like Boston do the same thing with Boston. Like that would be sick, honestly, I think. But the problem with that is like I mean, it's like just Flo- an idea. I know, I know. I'm just saying like, like Florida people who want to do it and stuff like that. Yeah. No, I'm saying like the caliber of in New Jersey wrestling's like kind of big. In Florida, I think they're known for like baseball. Yeah. So I think I told you this story actually the other day. One of my buddies was wrestling down in the team duels in Virginia Beach, and he wrestled the Florida state champ. And, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. the, he lost like an overtime or something, and Steve came up to him and was like, he was pissed. He's like, fuck, man. Like, I had that match. And he's like, you know you just lost to a Florida state champ. He goes, no shit, really? Yeah. And the kid came up to him after the match. He's like, yo, you should move to Florida. You'd be a state champ. Bro, honestly, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not a terrible idea. I think it's a good idea in theory. Imagine like low key you paid like, like, I don't know too many like, like wrestling, like people, but like Kale Sanderson, like imagine like you just paid him like a sick salary, like doubled his Penn State salary. And like, dude. They would automatically gain notoriety and uh, like validation. You know what I mean? Like people like that. Like, dude, there's retired wrestlers everywhere that would love that just love wrestling and want to be a part of it too. Yeah, you know it's I mean? just that there's only limited spots for like an Olympic team. There's only that's like, what I'm what, saying. 10 spots. That's what I'm so saying. So there's a bunch of filthy wrestlers that you know. What I mean, people just got to get jobs. Yeah, there's only like I said, there's only limited spots. Like, Dake and Taylor probably have jobs right now. No, Dake still wrestles for the uh, the Olympic team. And uh, Taylor got hurt last year, so he couldn't wrestle. But, like, Taylor, he's got his own, his own brand, Magic Man. And, um, like, he sells... What does it do? Like, sells clothes and shit? Yeah, he sells socks. I think he might have started shoes... But he does like clinics all over the country and that's like true that. it's like there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity for clinics think about it we used to go to Rutgers and Penn true, State true 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 I mean like yeah there it there I'm not trying to say that there's no opportunities there are opportunities there's just limited opportunities but I'm talking about Dake and Taylor and those are the only two people that I genuinely remember from college I was just trying to make a point you mm-hmm. know what I mean like think about all the other people who I have no idea who they are who were in the starting lineup you know what I mean just yeah. because like their last national championship match wasn't like undefeated versus undefeated champ Mm -hmm. so what do you uh what do you think about the ufc card this weekend i don't really i I don't know enough about the ufc to comment on anything ufc mcgregor's fighting i know it's gonna be lit yeah i think i don't know everyone's just saying do you know who cowboy is i do know who cowboy is everyone's saying that like mcgregor's just gonna walk through him the dude's fought 49 times like it's not just some scrub that McGregor's fighting, you know? He's had some of the filthiest knockouts. What's his record? He's 36 and 13. Bro. <laughs> like, he, he's the most active fighter in, probably in UFC history. I'm sorry for anybody listening. I have a terrible cold right now. Not a terrible cold, but my, I'm fucking stuffed. This fight card isn't actually as stacked as I thought it would be. You know who I love and who my favorite UFC fighter is? Is Amanda Nunez absolute savage absolute savage you know what he know what she does comes with her girlfriend to the ring i was like yeah this my bitch yeah pretty much literally bro like lit like walking Did up you to the watch ca- the the cyborg fight oh dude she eroded her like the ground on the earth literally shit on her chest made her call her daddy and walked out of the ring literally it was that was probably one of the most i, I low-key remember the women's fights more than i remember the like the guy fights because i remember holly knocking out ronda uh nunez knocking out holly i think that might have also been a head kick and then and then nunez just like every time i feel like i watch a ufc card nunez is fighting yeah the uh the rose nama yunas and uh andrade fight was fucking crazy too rose was winning the whole fight and andrade won by literally slamming her on her head and knocking her out bro (laughs) like some of those chick fights are like absurd like they're they're very aggressive bro all right so like this is a point i want to make about ufc because my brother's been to two ufc fights and i know a couple people who've like been to msg like while the fight has like been going on 
the atmosphere at one of those things is everybody in the crowd is his test their testosterone is skyrocketing because oh yeah they're probably all want they they're probably all want to be fighters for the most part or like all fighting fans and they probably think that they can knock out anybody at any bar dude people say that there's like 15 fights a section minimum bro oh easily he's mixing all the booze you're done <laughs> bro like everybody's just is like ready to go just like ready to Look fight at fucking um khabib jumped out of the cave <laughs> that started fighting people. that's that's on some other shit though that's I mean, some like, uh, that's some other shit did you listen to the press conferences and shit yeah he's like my father's gonna beat my ass no like mcgregor was literally just coming at his entire existence oh yeah oh yeah i heard family his religion his wife like just saying ignorant shit but like mcgregor mcgregor yo khabib is such a psychopath mcgregor like behind the microphone is like dude like i'm just kidding we're gonna make a bunch of money shut the fuck up we're gonna be okay like that's what he do with floyd you know what i mean but khabib and floyd are like in the ring like Hundred million yeah, dollars, literally. hundred Dude, million they did, dollars. They They're did, not great fighters. They're the best marketers. That's yeah, all it is. They did. Um, they literally did a world tour press conference. That's bro. what I'm saying. Like, that and Khabib is just such a psychopath. He's like, you've dishonored my family. Like, dead ass. Like, McGregor's like, 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 bro, I'm just kidding. Like, he's like, like try my whiskey, bro. Like, I remember in the press conference, he's like. Dana, I'm pouring a shot for me, you, and Khabib right now. And Khabib's like, I don't drink. <laughs> he goes, I do not enjoy alcohol. Yeah. He was <laughs> like, it's against my religion to drink. And like, McGregor's like, calling him a pussy. <laughs> like, Dana's just in the middle cracking up. Dude, like, that's what I'm saying, dude. They're just and then great at Khabib marketing. rocked him, bro. Oh, yeah. Rocked I don't understand him. how people are trying to say, like, McGregor won round one and two, and then just got Dude. choked down I'm like no he got shit on the best the best was when right after he beat him like that that video of him as an eight-year-old child wrestling a bear started circling around uh social media dude that was the cr- that like that's when you know like all right this guy this guy is on some other shit like dude the russians are crazy you have you ever watched a beat fight Mm-mm. dude dude looks like abe lincoln Oh really? Oh, I think I might know who you're talking about. He's an absolute savage. Is he bro. Khabib's? Is he Khabib's boy? Um, no, he actually fights on Frankie Edgar's team. Oh, nice. And nice. Uh, Mark Henry coaches him. He's the boxing coach. But apparently, he's like, I was listening to uh, Joe Rogan, and they were talking about Mark Henry. Like he learns like Russian and shit, and he'll coach you in Russian. Like he'll tell, he'll give Frankie like combos in Russian. Like every, apparently every fight, they learn like a different language of different combos and shit like that. Like just crazy shit. And Mark, Mark owns a pizzeria. Like that's his passion is he owns a pizzeria, but he just does like boxing coaching and shit. So who's Mark? Mark Henry's, uh, Frankie's boxing coach. And he coaches all those people like Edson Barboza, Marlon Morales. Right, right. Marais, um, the guy who coaches Manny Pacquiao is also hysterical. That white guy, the white guy with the white hair, and he like kind of has a little bit of, of a lisp. I think, dude, he he was really cool. I watched a documentary on him, but dude, that's that's like that's like literally enjoying that. Like you have to get to the state of mind where you literally enjoy putting your mind through terrible tasks. Like imagine getting your ass beat while learn, trying to learn Spanish. I'll be like, bro, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, <laughs> no, no habla. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know what I mean? Like, imagine like learning like Cantonese and like trying to wrestle. Yeah. Like, bro, we had coaches who spoke English who didn't give us the right combinations to hit. No, I just had him yelling my name. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, that, that might have been like the funniest thing that's ever happened to me in a match is him just I'm on top literally I'm I'm trying to do do something mm-hmm. like, I'm trying to turn him you're around. wrestling you're attempting yeah. to win the match yeah I am winning the match it was like literally seven nothing I'm winning and he's just yelling my name Paul don't like I'm not he wants me to like make eye contact with him mid match like I could hear you dude you're literally the loudest one in the gym right now and uh he just kept yelling my name. I finally look at him. He's like, do a move. I'm like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? I remember I literally get, like got off the kid and just like shrugged my shoulders at him. I was like, are you like, are you serious right now? You're calling my attention for 10 minutes and that's what you got to say with me? 
That's it truly is an all-time. It truly is an all-time moment. Yeah, but what I liked about Steve was um, his coaching method was different. He was like, "The gym's gonna be loud." He's like, "Listen for the calm voice." Like he would just talk. He would talk to you during the match. He was Steve never is yelling. Steve Rivera. Steve Rivera, Sebastian's dad. Like whenever he coached you, he would always be calm. Like he he was loud, but he wasn't yelling. Like he and you could always pick out his voice in the crowd when it when you were wrestling, mm-hmm. and I just thought that was pretty cool, like the way to do things. I don't know, his his meant uh, his mentality is just great, honestly. Like he still wrestles in the barn with the kids, and he's getting up. He's got to be. I mean, he's not fifty, but he's got to be up in his forties. Oh, pro- dude, probably. You got a son who's in college. You're definitely up there. Yeah. Um. Damn. Yeah, like that. That's such a good point too. Like, fighters and wrestlers are the most like mentally tough people. I think there are. Like you said, like he just like has such a crazy outlook on life. He has such a crazy outlook on like hard work and work ethic. Wrestling does teach you a lot. A lot of mental toughness that goes into that. It's like literally twenty percent skill, twenty percent conditioning, and like the other sixty percent is all mental. I think twenty five percent conditioning, and that extra five percent is you suck and win third period. Like, like bro, like if you weren't suck and win third period. Are you you had to be a, a fucking cyborg or some shit? That's, you had to be. that's the one thing I could always say that I was pretty good at was conditioning. Yeah, was, but you would hit the, you would hit. Uh, what was the exercise thing in the summer you would do? The pit, the pit, <laughs> the pit. Do you'd you be like, remember? you'd be like, do you want to come? I would be like, no, that sounds miserable. Uh, it's the summer. I'm gonna yeah. go to I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to a pool. In hindsight, I wish I did it because it sounded like a great workout. That was the best shape i've ever been in oh dude life. you were like fucking eight packed rock solid when we were fucking going dude, there i remember we had a plank competition i literally planked for 18 minutes it's really disgusting like me and freddie were the last ones it was whoever planked the longest didn't have to do farmer's carries where you just <sighs> hold dumbbells and walk there was this long ash driveway that we would just walk up and down like four times and he was like yeah whoever wins this like doesn't have to do it and 18 minutes goes by i'm like freddie dude it's like, I got to go home. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I got to eat dinner soon. He's like, so I just went down. And we both ended up doing the farmer carries, but I don't know. Was it you who went to a wrestling practice recently and said uh, the fr- he like they, they were warming up with monkey rolls? Yeah. Oh. I went to uh, Jackson Memorial practice with Connor to uh, just help out. Mm-hmm. And one of the groups didn't have, they needed one more person that were around my size. He goes, yeah, just hop in there for monkey rolls. In your head, were you like, are you fucking kidding me? Okay, if anybody's listening, all five of you right now, like monkey rolls is, it involves three people and it's, th- so everybody's laying down on their, or two people are laying down on their stomach and one person's standing up in the center. So the person on the right rolls over their back as a person in the center jumps over them. And then you proceed to do that in a chain of events. And it is the most miserable conditioning, uh, like <laughs> conditioning exercise that I have ever endured. And then you, t- and we used to do that at the end of practice to burn out. And dude, you saying that like, yeah, they warmed up with monkey rolls. I was like, oh, dude, I was threw up in my mouth. Dude, I was like, all right, I'm going to hop in. I'll do like. I was like, we're warming up. Probably do like three rounds. We get to the fourth round, bro. I have not done. <laughs> I have not done physical activity like that. I can like, just imagine you I've being lifted like, weights. Oh, yeah. bro, ripping jewel blunt, like yeah. blunts, like I literally drinking a, liquor. For I like- ripped a blunt before I went there. Like I was baked. I was like, yo, monkey rolls right now. Or you gotta oh be kidding my me. god! It got what does the, the head fourth- coach say when you're doing that? You're probably just like head coach wasn't there because it's out of season, so head coach can't coach. Right. So that's oh, why true, me true, and true, Connor true, were there true. helping out too. I know Dewey and Goddessman pretty well. Um, like SJV didn't go to Rutgers camp one year and they were like, uh, Connor brought it up to them. They were like, yo, tell them to come with us. And I remember after that, they were like, dude, transfer to Jackson. Freddie at 20, you at 26. Like we'd be killer. And I was like, dude, like, uh, it's like my senior year. I'm not transferring to Jackson. But like, think about how different your life would have been if you didn't go to SJV, dude. I didn't want to, bro. My parents literally, this is what they said. They said, you could go to SJV for a year. If you don't like it, you could transfer. After a year, I was like, I don't like it. 
like, let me transfer there. Like, no, <laughs> you're beat. You were still hanging out with us, but like you didn't. It wasn't because of the people, bro. Like I, I loved wrestling. Like I wanted to get better at wrestling. Yeah, and with I was your practice partner. The current, so. yeah, yeah, no offense to my practice partners, but like you compared to Jackson, they were yeah, not superior. Like I would have been wrestling Freddie every day. It's someone that I've been going back and forth with for years. Years. And no offense to you or Barrett, but like I kind of shit on you guys every day and that doesn't do anything for me. Like I wasn't until my senior year. Like Luke came in, but I was bigger than him, so I would mm-hmm. just muscle him around. And then my senior year, Khalil came in, and that was like the only year I actually had some sort of competition at practice, mm-hmm. which was like good. But yo, and I don't. I also think wrestling you, who was just like far superior to wrestling than me, like helped me at all either. Like you know what I mean? Like I would just like go in and like just try to wrestle you, and it would just be like. It's like it's like literally trying to ram your car into a into a brick wall every day. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I've ever like even seen. Barrett, who is a superior wrestler than me, who was your practice partner, what took you down once and you let him all year? You know what I mean? Like no, he literally didn't score a point on me all year. <laughs> that's for you, Barrett. You might not answer in the group chat. But, I fucking love that. Uh, what I want to talk about? I almost dived in the rabbit hole today. Video game mods. Like, dude, I saw some guy make a custom, like, it was like a GameCube controller split in half, essentially, and they're uh, Switch Joy-Cons. Like, he built a GameCube controller, essentially, for the Switch that clicks into the Switch. Really? Bro, it's insane here. I'll pull up the picture. That's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of different controller mods. Like, my, I play on an Xbox controller, but it's got four buttons on the back of it that you could just set to whatever the fuck you want. Look at that fucking thing. It's literally... Wow, that's actually sick. Right? How crazy so it's a is a Switch controller, but it, it's a GameCube. So I watched the entire video on how he built it. Like, there's, like, 15, like, 3D printed parts in this thing. Like, he... Remember the old wireless GameCube controllers? Like, the old wireless ones? They were, like, big, like... like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he took one of those, like, empty shells and was, like, just, like, fucking with it. And, like... like you'd have to plug the receiver into the GameCube, put it yeah, on the same channel yep, and shit. Yeah, yep, yep. And, like, dude, he just, like, built... Dude, it was... Cr- dude, people... He built... Like, dude. And then, like, you d- d- dive down the rabbit hole. Dude, there's people who, like, r- like rebuild old exclusive, like, Japanese, like, Game Boy Colors just for, like, collector purposes. It's, this, it. it's the same thing with shoes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'll buy an old pair of, like, Jordan 3s, clean them up, paint them up, and, like, hopefully try to sell them. But, dude, somebody... I, I, I watched this one video about, like, there was this old Game Game Boy Color. And that's not because I like playing GameCube or Game Boy Colors. Like, it's not because I, like, want one myself. It's because, like, I think the process of restoration... Of like taking something that is old and broken and watching it become like new again is mm-hmm. literally whether it's like a rusted, you know, like a rusted axe or like, you know, like an old drill or like an old vice grip to like, you know, one of these old Game Boys or something. Like, I used to or like in show. old shoes. They like, do, I think it's uh, so mesmerizing. They would do cars. Yeah, same thing, dude. I love that, dude. That's so funny. You say that, like, I'll watch this guy on YouTube, like, literally find like a 1964 like exclusive Porsche like in the garage that hasn't been touched for like 30 years, yeah. and he'll just clean it and make it pristine. I love that, dude. I think that's so cool. Maybe because I like that vintage, like old school feel. Like, I kind of like the old stuff. Like, I kind of just like. I mean, like new's cool. Like, trust me, like, dude. If I got like a new Lamborghini, obviously I loved it, but like, I want the Wolf of Wall Street Lamborghini way more than I'd have have a 2020 yeah. Lamborghini, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. granted, there are things that go into it, value, you know, mileage, reliability type of stuff. But I personally, for, for lack of a better term, I think that car is cooler than the new one. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, like I just think it's a step way more aesthetically pleasing, even though I wasn't really alive in that era. Like, you know what I mean? Like a 1998, like S S 500 Mercedes is like one of my favorite cars just because like I've seen what people can restore and do to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's just a lot you could do. Mm. There's so many different models throughout the year. Oh yeah, exactly. I, I just think restorations in general are like one of my favorite things, honestly. Yeah. I could say it's definitely not one of my favorite things, but I definitely enjoy watching mm. things be restored. And that, like I said, I used to watch that show with, uh, I forget what it was called. Man. Yeah, no, probably like Garage Finds or some one of those fucking yeah, shows, like on like Motor Trend on all, all those. Ones where 
Storage Wars. Where yes. Go to storage. Ah, I didn't love that one. Concepts like that, like Storage Wars or like car restorations or like, you know, like they, they made like this hype beast show called like Slobbies, whatever the fuck it is on Netflix. You know, like where a guy would go buy, sell and trade shit. And like they used to have like a toy one, like Toy Hunter, like mm-hmm. all that type of shit. Like, I think they're unauthentic. I genuinely, you watch it and you're like, this feels like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it like, feels like staged. Yeah, it feels like, if you're going to watch those types of shit, like Storage Wars, like I'd much rather watch the random guy take a video camera that has nothing to lose, doesn't have ratings to lose, doesn't have a job to lose, doesn't have a production assistant, go in with his one tiny GoPro or a Sony camera and do it himself and then, you know, just vlog his whole way and because that's real, that's authentic and that's what yeah. content is and that's hoping what like, you know, I'm hoping that's kind of what my kind of brand with it's authentic. Like these are like real opinions. These are like, you know what I mean? Like I'm not having you to talk about your book or you're running for politics or like, you know what I mean? Some shit like that. Like these are actually genuine real conversations that you could have with people and like their opinions matter because you know, they're people and like, I feel like a lot of people's opinions matter that, you know, and that's like definitely um one of the things that like I feel has grown significantly is like you said before streaming, but I feel like YouTubers, like i forget what i was looking at the other day but they did a poll of like the younger generation and they gave them like celebrities like let's just say scar johansson yeah like people like that uh versus youtubers like pewdiepie ninja mr beast and Mm. like i forget the exact number but it was like 70 percent of the younger generation didn't even recognize like a scarlett johansson and they saw pewdiepie they're like yeah i know who that is i know who this is exactly because they're not watching TV. They're not watching movies. They're watching YouTube. They're watching Twitch. They're watching Mixer. They're watching all these different. That's the same thing. Platforms. My little cousin. My I don't know how old he is. He has to be like ten, nine or ten. My I wasn't there, but this is what my dad told me. My dad it was like watching TV in like his room upstairs, like mm-hmm. in his bedroom. You're watching TV in the living room or the blue room or like or like one of the old TV rooms. I guess I guess I could understand the story, but this little man who is a firecracker, I'll say, for lack of a better term. He walks into my dad's room. My dad's like watching like Scarface or the Yankees or whatever the fuck he watches, you know. My cousin Ian goes, what do you watch? And my dad's like, I don't know, the Yankees. He literally turns and looks at my dad. He goes, this is what my dad said, quote quote for quote. He goes, point, turns and looks at him, makes eye contact with him while pointing at the TV. He goes, that's the biggest waste of time you should be watching YouTube, turns around and walks out. <laughs> my dad's like, what? My dad watches YouTube to like change like a laundry, uh, like a washing, uh, dishwasher part. You know what I mean? Like that's the other thing, dude. You could literally learn anything on. Like if I wanted to pick up piano and start playing piano, I could literally learn how to play piano on YouTube, just straight from YouTube. I like, dude. I taught myself everything that I know, like entrepreneurial wise, through YouTube. Red House, everything I did through YouTube. Like no matter what it is, you could learn it on YouTube. Anything, literally anything. Like it doesn't matter. I was like a heavy YouTuber back when it was like 2005. Yeah, when it was in like its infancy stages. I remember when it got bought by Google. Does Google own it? Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. I didn't even know that. But Alphabet. Alphabet? So Alphabet is the company that like owns Google. That's what it's called, like really? a holding company. Yeah. I work for a company called UM, but our holding company is called IPG. And if you wanted to go and buy like a UM stock, it's an IPG stock. Okay. So that's like the parent company. Mm-hmm. Something I love this week though was fucking Max new song. Yo, I'm going to the the fucking album listening party on Friday. Did I tell you that before? Yeah, yeah, you were telling me that before. I, I I can't wait. I can't wait, dude. Honestly, dude. Mac is. I mean, like, I don't. I don't even know what to say. Honestly, like, what do you think of the new song? I loved it, dude. Yeah, I thought it was pretty great. I think it's cool. Oh, this is like a companion album to Swimming. Yeah. I mean, that's how we always envisioned it. I just like, listen to this point. Ready? Okay. Say like J. Cole or Drake or Kendrick or Logic. So one of those guys die, mm-hmm. right? Tomorrow. When Kurt Cobain died for Christmas, Christmas, Father's Day, one of the fucking things. I bought my dad a, uh, a published version of Kurt Cobain's journal. Mm-hmm. So it was like when he died, they took his journal, they published it. So it had like lyrics, songs like, yo, who has like Drake's like Mac? 
and just can like release everything that he has on that. Like I want literally every throwaway song that he's ever made. Yeah. Like I want every single thing he's ever recorded. But like you're never gonna get that. You're never gonna get that. And dude, Peter Rosenberg this weekend on Hot 97 was saying that like Mac, he I I knew this, but he he reiterated it was that Mac had music. Like bro, he think about it. He lived, eat, and breathed music like i think he's he, one of the most versatile oh, musicians easily. of our time at least easily he, easily every dude song, i got him on my wall dude for a reason like dude, you know he's what i mean been my background since he's died like, yeah bro more people texting me when mac died than texting me on my birthday really i bro i had like 25 people text me instantly i had tickets to go see him he was going to be at the hulu theater uh jid was opening and i was going to meet him i was going to buy meet and greets I had the tickets. I didn't buy the meet and greets yet, but I got refunded for the tickets. And it was so, super sad. Yeah. I feel like his death was like, like I've never been hit by a celebrity a, yeah, yeah. A celebrity death like that before. Mm-hmm. Like I felt like I knew him. Like I grew up listening to Donald Trump mm-hmm. and all those songs. Like You want to you hear something crazy? What? When we went to Wildwood, for Gina's Sweet 16. Mm-hmm. So like a couple of us, we went to uh, our friend Gina. She, for her Sweet 16, instead of having like a giant party, like her family rented out like a, a beach house and like like a group of us just went for the week and like went to the beach and all that good shit. And I remember like I had the iPhone and that's still when YouTube was still like a built in uh, app. app on the phone. And I remember like looking at the trending like what was trending and the and i never loved mac before this moment like mm-hmm. my boy horn loved mac like i knew people who loved him i didn't love him like i was on that wayne drake uh you know maybe even still lincoln park phase like that i was like going through and he dropped a miss calls video and i watched it once bro i watched it once and bro i no exaggeration i must have watched it 50 times that weekend like, I remember all of you would go to sleep. I would watch that video on repeat every, like, bro, over and over and over and over and over again. And then uh, watching movie with the sounds off came out and, like, dude, Star Room OG, uh, Killing Time, like, those songs, like, really hit a nerve. But I didn't love that, but I was still progressing with music and my interest and stuff. Um, but, I mean, I still loved all of his music. Like, it, it, was, it was really something, but Good A.M., I think Good AM really solidified me as, like, a Mac mega fan. Yeah. Because, like, I was like, yo, that's fire. And you know what? You know what else I loved Mac? I loved listening to Mac's music just as much as I liked listening to his interviews. I loved his interviews. Yeah. And that's the same thing with J. Cole and Drake. Like, I could listen to the things that they have to say just as much as I could listen to their music. Maybe that's because I connect with their music so much. Maybe that's because, you know, they're celebrities and they're out so scarcely that you only get so little of their inner thoughts provided to the world. Um, but like, dude, I remember uh, even before, actually, that's that's not true. That's not true because I loved Mac. I started loving Mac, I would say, my freshman year of college. I would say I loved him because, dude, I listened to Diablo every single morning in the shower. Like, every song. Dude, I could rap you every single word to that. Every single word to that. So, Good AM came out shortly after. I loved Good AM front to back. I, I It's my, personally, my favorite Mac album. Even though The Divine Feminine is a close, a close second for me. Strictly because... Um, it's like short it's long it's it's melodic all that stuff like i i I mean 10 songs not short but you know what i mean like i think it's max one of his his greatest album i mean all of max albums are great but the divine feminine was very very good for me for a lot of different reasons but good i am i loved max raps like even though the songs on fucking uh divine feminine were fire like i love a mac rapped like dude like Godspeed, like a uh, perfect circle slash Godspeed. Like if you haven't heard that song in a while, like we'll listen to it after after we uh, close up shop here. But that song cuts off halfway through the middle. He reflects on his life about not being in other people's lives and like drawing all these like d- uh, like uh, like divides in his relationships and like not being where he thought he was gonna be. And like you know, I, I thought that that song like really struck a chord with me as well. I mean, Hundred Grandkids a fucking slap. ROS, 
uh, you should probably take your heels off because you've been running through my mind. Like, bro, that line, I might, I'm, I, dude, I think I literally steal that line from every girl that I try to hit on with fucking he- high heels on. <laughs> I think I've said that 15 times in my life. Because you don't try to hit on a lot of girls with high heels all the time. You know what video I loved is um, when he was on Tiny Desk. Oh, I, when he dude. Sang, when he sang 2009 on Tiny Desk. Bro. Of course, dude. Of course. That, that one was amazing. I mean, dude, swimming was a great. Okay. So this is, this is, I'll give you my honest opinion of swimming right now. Ready? So the first time I heard it, I was like, okay. I don't love it as much as Good AM. And I don't love it as much as Define Feminine. That's exactly as I, I heard, listened to it all throughout the first time. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. Just, I feel like it wasn't like that same Mac vibe mm-hmm. as you get in all the other ones, which is kind of cool about them because I feel like every album is mm-hmm. a different vibe, you know, a different tone to it. But after listening to it multiple times, I was like, all right. I oh, like, this is like, yeah. it was definitely like a multiple listen through. Yeah, but like, dude, sure. you could listen to Good I Am the first time through. You'd be like, Whoa. Wow, dude, that fucking slapped, dude. Yeah. That was good. And then Divine Feminine, you were like, whoa, that album was crazy. Like, it touched my emotion. But swimming, you got it's almost like it's almost like looking, it's almost like going from like watching a video as good I am. Like you're watching a video of Mac kind of like trying to progressively try to get sober. A picture for Divine Feminine, because you're painting this picture of just like what love is for him. But swimming was very abstract. It's almost looking like a very abstract picture. You have to squint your eyes so they kind of look at it. But this is what I said. I'll never forget. I was driving to uh, Asbury Park, not to go to Porter or like Johnny Max. I was going to get dinner with Tom, uh, my friend Steve, and uh, I forget who else we were with. And I was, Steve was like, I had, and Steve's a big Mac fan and was like, hey, I haven't heard the album. How's the album yet? And I was like, listen, this is how I feel. Mac just went through a lot with his breakup and the DUI and everything. So he just gave me two albums for me. This album was for him. Yeah, like for sure. he, Like he felt that he needed that album to do whatever it is that he needed to do with it. Like that's how I felt about it. I listen to it, I go, okay, you know what? He needed this album. I didn't need it. I needed Good AM and Divine Feminine. Like I needed those mm-hmm. and he gave them to me, but he needed swimming more than I needed it. I mean, of course, dude. 2009, uh, Dino, um, the intro, oh my God, hits so hard. Uh, Come Back to Earth, like, hits so hard, so good. And, uh, dude, uh, a, a crucial part of the story that I'm, I'm leaving out, especially with Mac, is Mac dropped Divine Feminine kind of a, on a surprise, on a Friday, because he dropped Dang. Dang was a single with Anderson. And I was like, okay, like, I, I like this. Like, I was like, all right, like, I fuck with this vibe. I remember it. Like, I was st- I was still listening to Spotify. Like, I didn't have Apple Music back then. Like, I remember seeing the single. Uh, I was like, all right, like, I like this. I like this. And then, uh, like, two or three, I don't know how the time period, I think it was like a couple weeks after Dang dropped, he, uh, he was like, yo, Divine Feminine, like, this Friday. And as soon as he dropped Divine Feminine, he also dropped his tour dates. He he had his tour opener was in Pittsburgh. And we were four hours away from Pittsburgh in my junior year of college. Because it was my junior year of college. We were in Westchester. We were four hours away. I grab my boys. I go to Christian. My boy Christian, Cummins, Steve, uh, Francione, and Dom McFadden. All giant Mac fans. I was like, yo, the tour opener is in Pittsburgh with Mac Miller. It's four hours away. Let's road trip it. Let's go. Because he has that uh, Fader uh, documentary about like stop making excuses about him like getting off of drugs and like all that stuff. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. But the end of that video is him at the exact same venue called Stage AE on the Good AM tour, tour opener, rocking Pittsburgh. And it looked electric. I was like, dude, his hometown, the venue looks crazy, everything. So you look at the you look at the venue, dude. So I'll, I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you the little Spark Notes version of like my experience. So we drive four hours. So it's on a Sunday, and Stage AE is an outside concert venue that is essentially in the parking lot of Heinz Field where the Steelers play. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's there. He's like dating Ariana. He's at the Steelers game with Ariana. So we're pulling up to the game. All the Steelers fans are leaving. All the Mac Miller fans are coming in. So we pull up. We pull up. 
it's like people are like drunk people are like getting out of their tailgate like all this stuff so then uh we go we stand in the general mission line we're early we're like first hundred people mm-hmm. easily we're first hundred without a doubt and it's outside venue it's 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 really cool and uh i get in line and like you know my boys are drinking we're i don't even think we're 21 yet honest i really don't think no no, no we were 21 we i was not 21 Cummins wasn't 21 none of us were 21 <laughs> Christian definitely wasn't. So we get in line um, and I'm with Dominic Fadden and then Christian, Steve and John all go like, yo, we want to go explore Pittsburgh. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. 0% I do that. 0% I leave this spot in line right now for general admission. Mm -hmm. 0%. They're like, well, we're going to go. And then thank God, shouts out my boy Dom. Dom was like, yo, Shane, like, you know what? I agree with you. Like, I will stay with you here and hold this spot down in line. And I was like, good. Because I'm not leaving. You, the four of you could go. I'm going to stay here. <laughs> like, I'm not going to not be this close. Like, I knew what type of experience it was going to be. Yeah, for sure. So they go explore Pittsburgh. They take an Instagram picture. They come back. And uh, I, I'm i in line. And they're like, they're like, yo, like, shouts out. You hold it down. I go, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to. Dude, we were like, no lie, the, one of the first hundred people in there. We get in there. And like, dude, uh, we're mad close, dude. We're extremely close. We had Chu Jackson, Puy, uh, Puya opened. Pu- I mean, Puya was killing it, but the crowd was not feeling him. Like, God bless that guy. Um, and then Mac came out, and Mac opened with a uh, hundred grandkids. And like, yo, there's this. Uh, oh, oh, the the concert was electric, dude. Absolutely electric. He burnt the place down. Like, I still have the video edited on my phone. I still have all the videos. Like, he played such a great. Uh, album like he didn't play too much of Divine Feminine just because it just came out and he was worried that the crowd wasn't gonna rock with it as much. He played We, which I didn't think was like a the be- the best banger to play on the album, but dude, he played. Uh, okay, so this is what he did. He rapped Diablo a cappella. When I heard the beat, I was like. I, I, Christian has a video of me being like, "This is my fucking song, bro. Like, I love this song." And bro, every dude, so surprising. This is going to sound like bullshit, but I swear on my life, this is this is true to me. So I'm looking around. People are like, what? People are like, what is this? Like, what is this song? What is this song? I'm looking around like, what? What do you, you don't know this song? So Diablo's a So I'm probably like 10 people away. Like I'm talking like from the stage. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm not like up against the stage, but I'm, I'm pretty close mm-hmm. to the stage. So uh, I start rapping Diablo hard. With my body, with my soul, dude. I'm going hard. And bro, I sw- I swear, I swear on all that is good and holy. Bro, Max stops, looks at me, and raps like three bars with me. Like Diablo, like eye contact, everything. I'm going hard because he sees that I'm the only one going hard that knows this song. And then he cuts the beat off and then raps verse two and three, super fast acapella. And I was like, yo, this is incredible. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. It was sick, dude. I, like, I'll never forget him making eye contact with me and us rapping Diablo. I mean, like, anybody that comes up to me is going to be like, bro, that's, f- you like, that's bullshit. And then, like, or like, then you get your boys that are like, yo, don't worry, though. He raps with Mac Miller. Like, you know what I mean? Bullshit. But, like, I promise you, like, I definitely did that shit. Like, I yeah. felt him look, I felt him look at me. Whatever. As a psychopathic as I sound. <laughs> so, so the ultimate point was, I th- okay, the only thing I have to more about, I have to say about that concert is that, uh, was I thought Ariana was going to come out and sing favorite part with him and she didn't. Really? And she didn't because she was there because they took pictures at the Pittsburgh game. Like she was, she, she was definitely at the show. For sure. And I was like, yo, the album just came out. Like he's, she definitely, it's his hometown tour opener. Like, why wouldn't she come out? I love that song, too. Dude. Dude, I give so much respect to celebrities. I I wouldn't be able to do it. Being Matt, in the public eye, literally 24-7. Dude, you can't even go fucking to Wawa and get a hoagie without having to take 25 pictures. Yeah, no. Like, are you kidding me? Like, dude, yeah, leave me alone. And I remember um, I read something the other day on Twitter. It was like, yo, it wasn't Ocho Cinco, but I'm just going to use him as an example. They saw a famous football player. And they're like, yo, just saw Ocho Cinco, but I realized he was with his family. Like, I don't want to interrupt his time. And Ocho Cinco, whoever the football player was, was literally like, hey, man, honestly, I respect that so much. Like, where are you at? You want to meet up someplace? I'll, I'll take a picture with you. Like, you got to respect. These are these are normal people. They just happen to have a talent 
that is in the public eye. And, like, I wouldn't want to go out and watch a movie somewhere and just, yo, that's Paul. Like, mm-hmm. let's go. 25 people are coming up to me and be like, yo, leave me the fuck alone. Like, I'm here with my, my wife and kids. Like, I'm trying to have a family night. I feel like wife and kids and, like, us are different, though. You know what I mean? Like, if it was, imagine, like, me or you were famous and, like, we went out. Like, well, yeah, that's, that's different. That's, like, that's if we're with different. our, yeah. you're, you're comparing, like, entourage to, like, the real life Mark Wahlberg. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. No, I mean, if I had my entourage with me, fuck yeah, I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Come up to me. The, gonna introduce you my boys hook up my boys are all yeah, the girls I mean, coming up you know yeah, what i mean exa- i'd be like, but like there's a even if i'm alone like i'm dude i'm just i'm going to get a sandwich at wawa i don't need 25 people coming up to mm-hmm. me i feel like for me personally for for me personally like if that celebrity like so like if it was sam darnold or jamal adams like a, i'm a giants jets fan giant jets fan fucking jesus christ i'm a <laughs> i'm a fanatic jets fan i'm i'm obsessed with the jets i love the jets i ride for the jets so if i saw it if i saw a jets player i'd be like hey man like i'm a massive jets fan like can i please take a picture with you but if i saw saquon i would be like yo saquon what's good you know what i mean like it's kind of just like like it's kind of to me where it's just like it depends who that celebrity is to me for me to like have to go out of my way and like get that picture but to us playing devil's advocate like being rude for that 30 seconds and you have a picture like you have a picture forever with like a celebrity that you love you know what i mean like yeah i get what you're saying like that guy probably time. didn't love ocho cinco you know what i mean like if he was like a, a, a crazy like Bengals fan or something or whoever like chad ocho cinco play for was like hey man like i'm a giant Bengals fan like i loved you when you were up, up getting you know pass it thrown to you blah 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 blah. like like that's different to me than somebody being like oh that's that's oh that's that guy you know what i mean like oh let me let me take a picture so i can show my friends i think i think i'm coming to a point here that i just realized getting a picture with a famous person is get then getting it is different than getting a picture with somebody who's famous who has affected your life or you're a fan of someone that's like an idol to you yeah so it's just like it's just like I'd like I would try to get a picture with Saquon, but it's just for the sake of me getting a picture with Saquon. Like if I got a picture with Sam Darnold, like that's like that means way more to me. Like get it's almost like getting a picture with Saquon's like clout chasing for lack yeah. of a better term. Like but like Sam Darnold to me is just like I got a picture with Sam Darnold. Like that's crazy yeah, to me. Like I love the Jets. And yeah. Like he's the QB. I need to get this picture. That's what I'm saying. I, I understand what but you're people, saying. But people like, but the, the rent the daily per people don't think like i do in that regard you know what i mean like they'll just be like oh that's probably 95 percent of females in the city if they saw ariana grande just walking by like they'd ask for a selfie yeah you know what i mean like or guys too like you know i saw ariana grande that's what i'm saying but like i'm but i'm saying (laughs) that selfie to us isn't as important to like that girl who has like her lyrics tattooed on her who like follows all of her fan accounts who like worships the ground that she walks on because granted like yo that that obsession probably isn't healthy and granted i have a a lot of like for lack of a better term obsessions with you know people and musicians that like i'm not in their lives like i love the jets like i could probably name like 50 jets players like off the top of my head like i love music like if i see a rapper like i just think it's cool like you know what i mean like it's, it's almost like they're like larger than life essentially but i mean like you can't take away the fact that like her music probably didn't touch her or help her or save her in some emotional sense because it has happened to me too you know what i mean like like i wouldn't even know what to say if i like went up to like j cole or like if mac was alive or like you know what i mean like you know what i mean like when i when i have uh meet and greets with like like artists like i like to get meet and greets because exactly what i like to say like i want a picture with like one of the people i'm rocking with Mm because like also at the same time like I like I like knowing that I liked them first before everybody else hopped on them. You know what I yeah. mean? Like I have a picture with Chance pre SNL. I have a picture with Russ pre, uh, like during the There's Really a, a Wolf tour, and I have a picture with Jack Harlow before you know he really anybody knows him. You know what I mean? And that's not because like I'm clout chasing. Like that's because like I like those people and like those mean something to me. You know? What I, mean, I mean, you also went to a meet and greet. I'm talking about like. I see this person in the public. You know what I mean? I agree. Like, there's a big difference. There is between- there is that big difference, but I'm just trying to draw the comparison of me 
understanding where those people are coming from you know what i mean yeah, that come no. in the street like that go in the street but like it's hard to differentiate with ariana or like justin bieber or like those people because it's just like oh wow am I, justin bieber let me take a picture. that's what i'm saying yeah. bro i want to take a picture with biebs too but that but that doesn't mean that like i stand biebs that's what i'm saying no i understand where you're coming from totally but I just thought it was cool how that guy just respected his privacy. Of course. And was like, of course. And he respected him back by saying, hey, man, like, I really appreciate that. Let, let's take a picture. Or exactly. Exactly. Yo. That's all it takes. I have a uh, big topic switch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I thought of it when you were telling your Mac story about how you guys, like, locked eyes. Mm -hmm. And, like, no one believes you. Mm-hmm. Everyone, no one ever believes me. <laughs> if you tell me you saw a UFO, I'm going to freak <laughs> the fuck out. <laughs> Is it really that? Yeah, it's literally I saw a UFO, bro. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. It's when I, I, it's when I used to work at Six Flags. Oh, I do remember this story. I'm walking. It kind of matches the Joe Rogan stories, too. Dude, and there's been a lot of sightings in New Jersey. Because mm -hmm. I remember him and um, Joey Diaz were talking about it. I was walking from one stand to another. And, dude, I kid you not, there's 50 people just stopped, jaw on the floor, like, just staring at the sky. Mm -hmm. I asked him, dude, I was like, what the fuck are you guys looking at? And he points up at the sky. And you could see, like, you ever watch Harry Potter when he puts on the invisibility cloak? Yeah, you could cloak? see, but you can't see. You could see. see the outline, but, like, you can't really see him. Mm -hmm. You could see, like, the outline of, like, this ship-looking thing. It didn't look like an airplane. didn't look like any traditional. What was the shape of it? Was it just circular, like the bean, like dude, they talk about? It kind of... It didn't really look like the bean. Like from my memory, dude, it literally looked like Millennium Falcon shape, yeah. like some some sort of like small, compact, round shape. Mm -hmm. And um, you could just see the outline of it. We're all just staring at slowly moving across the st sky, and then all of a sudden, it just speeds up and disappears, bro. Like completely vanishes, and everyone's just like, okay, and just continues. Yeah, like continues on do? normally, like with their daily lives. My where I want to go with this topic was like, well, what what's your thoughts on extraterrestrial beings? Like, what do you have an opinion? Do you have a strong opinion for or against them? Because I'm I'm really into space and aliens and that shit. Like, that's a big I think topic that there's I think that there's I, I have a lot of opinions. I think that there's definitely life outside of this planet. Do I think that there's other human like creatures? Like, think about think about. Okay. There's so many tangents. Okay, like you you accept the reality in which that's presented to you, right? Mhm. Mm I did a I did a I did a uh I did a project on the Truman show or, or an essay on the Truman show. You know what the Truman show is the movie? I've heard of it. I'm not sure if I've so, ever seen it. So Jim Carrey as a baby, he's taken as a baby, and they essentially build this artificial wor world for him, and then it's a 24-hour reality show is kind of the plot of the movie. And they essentially build him in a dome, but you, he thinks the, the world around him is real because you accept the reality in which that is presented to you. It's a simulation. Exactly. It's a, simu <laughs> it's a simulation. Not us. I'm saying like what he went through is a simulation. And it's the same thing for like, uh, I'm not condoning their actions whatsoever, whatsoever. But like these, these like suicide bomber terrorists, like, dude, imagine you're a 15 year old, 14 year old person. And your mom is like, this is what we believe. This is what you, you know what I mean? Like what's the difference between me and that kid? That kid was born on the other side of the planet and was just bred to think a certain thing. You know what I mean? Uh, people just like fabricate reality into something that it's not exactly so like so like the thing about aliens is that like i think they probably think i believe that they i believe that their thought process if any is so astronomically different than anything that we can comprehend that it levels of communication would almost be impossible if there is other extraterrestrial life not even humanoid like intelligent life well think about it earth's been around for five billion years think about a planet that's been around for 10 billion years how much more techno technology i can't speak words how much more advanced their civil civiliz i really can't speak but it couldn't it like bro it might not even be civilization you know what i mean yeah. it like like you it's literally infinitely possible what the fuck that, that that could possibly be out there you know what i mean like you think like oh aliens like 
civilization like there's colonies or like they go yeah. to, dude it could be so different that we can probably like that we can't even comprehend it and like dude it's coming down and looking at us like bro they you know what i mean it, it could be compl- like they couldn't even grasp you know what i mean like uh, i forget which guy on uh on joe rogan was like was like imagine instead of fire they just like discovered like like instead of like like imagine giving a caveman like a car yeah. You know what I mean? That type of shit. Like, like that's what it would be like for these people. Like, they could be like, they could have like great technology, but their thought, pro- you know, whatever. So, like, that's one point I have about it. The second point is Bob Lazar, the fucking sergeant that saw the fucking airplane in the sky. They're all telling the truth. They're all telling the truth. They are yeah. not lying. I hate when people are like, they're lying for publicity. Like, bro, both of their lives are ruined yeah. forever. You think Bob? Lazar's you think he a fucking time? gave a shit about what the fuck trying to fabricate that aliens are real to ruin his life about it? Yeah. No, like there's literally no way. And the fact that multiple, it's not just Bob Lazar saying it. Like that other guy that said it is like high up general in the military. He the saw Air it Force. with his eyes. There's a video Bro, of it. He was. Flying, flying a fighter jet after this thing and said it just vanished. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. What? It's crazy. So, the, the tic tac. That's the tic tac. Oh, that's what it was. I was saying a bean, lima bean. <laughs> um, but, like, this is my last ultimate point about it. I think that any government does not tell the general population. I mean, it goes back to a line from Men in Black, as stupid as this sounds. And then when Will Smith turns to whatever, Agent K, and goes, he goes, why not tell people? Like, a person is smart. He's like, yeah, a person is smart, but people are dumb. People panic. People, you know, do all this crazy shit. Like, dude, imagine the world that would erupt if, like, tomorrow CNN was like, aliens are real. 100% confirmed. Here are the facts. Yeah. This is this is the ultimate point. That, that goes back to people just, people are crazy, bro. Yeah, people are crazy, of course. But... I think that it would disprove religion and I don't think the world could take that. I think that, I think that like, yo, like, you know what I mean? Like Christianity, like Hinduism, like Muslim, like Judaism, like. How would that disprove it though? Because then that not all living creatures are created in God's image. There's other creatures that aren't created in God's image. Like I just, I just. But it could still be created in God's image. I don't. It's just a different. I think it would, I regardless, I don't think disprove is the right word. I think it would cause an insane rift in religion. Well, I think the fucking religion, like, they, they know shit that know. Like, the Vatican, bro, the secrets of the Vatican, you ever heard shit about that? Like, the caves and shit under, they, they, they know shit, bro. They know shit. <laughs> they know shit that probably governments don't even know. But, like... Like you said, it would probably cause extreme panic because a lot of people... There's some people, dude, I don't know how they get through day-to-day activities. Like, Bro. Their brain power is just minuscule. Like, I'm not trying to be a dick, but like they just but don't like, know how to do things. Like, dude, even in New Jersey, like working in New York, like there's like... Dude, you walk down New York, you could see like 50 different cultural backgrounds in a, in a moment. So it's like even... Yeah. But New Jersey, you know, you're... You're exposed to a lot of different types of backgrounds, type of stuff, like dude, and like I mean, dude, America's literally it's called the melting pot. Yeah, there's people from everywhere. Some of the cheese is stale, bro. <laughs> Some of the cheese is goddamn stale. <sighs> Fucking crusades. All right, well, let's end on a high note. What you? What else you got to say to the people, Paulie? All fifteen of them. Um, nothing really. I had a good time. For for those that don't know, I am the undefeated gift giver of all time. I am the undefeated gift giver. So I literally forgot to give Paul something I was so excited to give him. None of you are going to understand it, but he's going to understand it oh and he's going to enjoy it. <laughs> but also in the past, I've given you fire gifts like Das Boot because you were always going to say, I'm going to give them the Das Boot out the group chat. Um I've, I've given you a drawing that's been <laughs> that's been one of the best things ever. So I got you a pair of socks. With, oh my with, god! With the bro, Eiffel Tower that. on it. <laughs> <laughs> a pair of socks with the Eiffel Tower on oh, it because you just you comedy. even though you never been to France, you love going to Paris, bro. Love Paris. I love it. Big bro. Paris guy. Okay. Well, thanks, Shadow. No problem. <laughs> 
I'm not going to get into it. No, I'm not going to get into it. You don't deserve to know why he has those socks. You don't deserve it. And even if you got it right and you know what it is, you still don't deserve to know why he got the socks. Okay? He got the socks because I painted a picture. It looked like Mona Lisa. That's all you need to know. Okay? And that's an inside joke. Okay? And you're not going to get it. You're not. And that's okay. You know why? Because maybe this will inspire you to get some friends to have some fucking inside jokes. Okay? <laughs> oh, I'm a piece of shit. Okay. Don't forget to... Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Apple Music playlist, the Spotify playlist. I update music weekly just in case you like some tunes. I have a Apple Music radio playlist as well. All those links will be in the description. Don't forget to like, subscribe, rate, and do all that good shit for the podcast. It really helps me out. I very, very much appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys next week.